Whether they are slaves fighting for their freedom, prisoners of war hoping to live another day, or glory-seeking freemen, gladiators are the macho heroes of Roman popular culture. Larger than life, trained to kill, fearless. The Roman public loved them. Even though the cemetery is over 1,000 miles from Rome itself, the presence of gladiators in New York makes historical sense. Gladiators were a Roman propaganda tool used throughout the empire. Their fights sent out a clear message to friends and foe alike. Rome held the power. It was a brutal but effective public relations exercise. Everywhere there were wounds, moans, gore. One could only see danger. Pseudo Quintilian, 1st century AD. As the empire expanded outwards from Rome, gladiatorial arenas were built in all strategic locations. To date, 230 have been discovered. These games were a symbol of their conquest over the world. And they structured these games in which they have the right over life and death. And this is pretty much setting up uh, the reality of the Roman Empire. We're the powerful, we're the strong. If the York skeletons are gladiators, then the scientists will have an unprecedented chance to piece together the life stories of the men who fought and died for the pleasure of Rome. The task of deciphering the bones falls to forensic anthropologist Mick Wazocki. Each skeleton's got 206 bones, thereabouts, uh, so you can imagine that's 16,000 plus bones to look at. And we had to look at the bones individually, sometimes looking for very, very minute modifications which might indicate the use of uh, certain types of weapons. Six skeletons stand out. They hold the clues that will bring these long dead warriors back from the dead. The first body focused on by the forensic team appears unremarkable. Forensics indicate a central European origin and at a little over five feet seven tall with a lean physique, he seems an unlikely candidate for a gladiator. But mysterious scars on his hip and shoulder bones fire up their interest. There are two uh, puncture marks here on this hip bone, uh, here, very typical penetrating fracture. This is part of the shoulder blade, and you can see another puncture there. Wazoki's interpretation is sensational. These are absolutely typical of carnivore tooth marks. The forensic team set about narrowing down the list of possible attack animals. We took some measurements of the diameter of the puncture marks and we compared those to measurements of various big cats and other uh, large mammalian carnivores. Uh, and the measurements fitted uh, pretty well with either bear or tiger. The astonishing theory is put to the test. This tiger's canine tooth actually fits the puncture mark very, very nicely. Even more so, on the left side, tooth fits in there nicely and snugly. Also with our shoulder blade, the scapula, there's the canine of the tiger, and it fits that hole almost perfectly. Capable of exerting a force of over 1,500 pounds per square inch, almost twice the power of a brown bear. The teeth of a tiger can penetrate through armor, skin, muscle before hitting bone. And that would be about the depth of penetration that you'd expect. Uh, remember, the, the animal's not interested in biting the bone, it's getting at the flesh. Um, so this, this kind of puncturing is coincidental. 